The Pixel 7 Pro is the biggest, boldest Google flagship phone to date, but how does it stack up against the recently released and somewhat super phone Xiaomi 13 Pro? Well, here's everything you need to know. Thanks for watching 95 Google here on YouTube. Remember to thumbs up, hit subscribe, and then tap the bell icon to be among the first to watch our upcoming videos. So what is really surprising right out of the gate is just how similar the statures of the Pixel 7 Pro and the Xiaomi 13 Pro actually happen to be. The size and dimensions are, while not the same, almost identical in a lot of ways, with 6.7 inch screens at the very heart of both of these devices. Obvious divine differences aside though, the ceramic finish of the Xiaomi 13 Pro should provide added durability. And that's not to say that Gorilla Glass Victus, which is used on both the screens and the back of the Pixel 7 Pro, can't deflect moderate damage of their own. Xiaomi has also favored a square camera module, which I think is fine, but because of this design decision, it lacks any real identity in a sea of similar smartphones. The Pixel 7 Pro standout camera bar does forgo the staid chassis that were seen from many in the industry as smartphones seemingly fall in line with various design principles. It's all the better though for the Pixel as it's improved upon its predecessor by dropping the glass bar in favor of a more durable metal frame. Does this really matter though if you're gonna stick your phone in a case anyway? Well, that's a question for you to answer, but I'd imagine most of you will say no. I will say there is little to separate the QHD Plus displays, which are both excellent here. Both are rated at 120 Hertz and based on the AMOLED design principle. Each screen also includes an optical in-display fingerprint scanner for biometric security, but you can use software-based face unlock if you do prefer that. Where the Xiaomi 13 Pro does edge the Pixel is in its 1900 nit maximum brightness level, which is versus the 1500 nit on the Pixel 7 Pro. It also has a marginal increase in the vertical on-screen pixels, although not massively noticeable. The Xiaomi 13 Pro also has vastly superior internals from the Pixel 7 Pro, from the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processor to the faster UFS 4.0 storage, which is available on the 256 gigabyte variant and higher, this is truly a full throttle smartphone. Sure, the Tensor G2 is a good chip in its own right for most things that you'll want to do, but it does fall quite short in raw performance levels available. What I will say is impressive is just how snappy the Pixel 7 Pro feels, despite the admittedly weaker internals. And Google's optimizations do make a huge difference here, given that the Xiaomi 13 Pro has raw processing power to burn, and it doesn't necessarily feel quite as pronounced when you're using these side by side, I will mention that. In many ways, we're talking about two by the numbers Android flagship phones with all of the functionality and hardware in place to guarantee a great experience. Xiaomi though has made some sensible hardware decisions, including the addition of Wi-Fi 7 for faster connectivity later down the line, plus an IR blaster, which has become synonymous with the Chinese smartphone brand. When we compare MIUI 14 to the default Android 13 experience, I think it becomes a little bit of a tough task as these software builds while they are based upon the latest mobile operating system, feel like they're at very much the opposite ends of the spectrum. MIUI 14 includes a massive amount of customization, tweaks, and tuning. Meanwhile, the Pixel is lightweight and only comes with minor adjustments over the base AOSP build as Google intended. Xiaomi tends to bend and skew its own design to fit what we'd consider a more iOS-friendly aesthetic. This means things like Squircle icons, a control center clone, plus more, but you can disable a lot of these. There are also lots of optional customizability options bundled in. You're practically able to tweak nearly every portion of your home screen and even the lock screen to boot. A downside here though is that there are lots of duplicate Xiaomi versions of applications, including things like the Mi Browser, the Gallery, and even File Manager. Plus there's lots of third-party apps pre-bundled in, including Facebook, TikTok, LinkedIn, Booking.com, plus a few more on top. Some of these can be removed, but not all, which makes the inclusion a tad frustrating. The Pixel 7 Pro offers little bloke to speak of, that is unless you class the default Google Suite as such. Almost every app can be removed though, which is why it seems less problematic from afar. When it comes to features, Google's approach is to offer smart functionality that leverages the Tensor processor. You'll get access to features like photo and blur for images, on-device real-time translation, plus a dedicated VPN service, plus much more on top of that. Xiaomi doesn't offer as many smart functions, but it does provide lots of intricate little features that you may not find in other OEM skins. One bonus is that no matter which version of Android that you do prefer, 
the major update schedule is now identical. You'll get three versions of Android with the Pixel 7 and the Xiaomi 13 Pro, which will take you up to version 16 or Android 16 as we're likely going to know it. A murky area though for the Xiaomi flagship is just how often that you'll see security patches arrive on this device. The Chinese OEM has a fairly poor track record of pushing updates to its previous flagships. That said, the Pixel and Xiaomi are slated to get five years of patches, but the Google handset benefits from that day one updates in all of its forms. So if you really do care about getting updates on time, probably going to be Google or bust. Judging the lifespan of a device is always a tough ask if you question me about it. Even with similar usage patterns, you might see wildly different longevity figures. The Pixel 7 Pro though does have a larger 5000 mAh internal cell, which while it does edge out the Xiaomi 13 Pro's 4820 mAh battery, what is interesting is whether it's due to the improved power efficiency of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip, it makes it an all day phone and then some. The Pixel 7 Pro of it does have solid lifespan of its own, but Qualcomm's latest and greatest processor might be able to push the Xiaomi 13 Pro way past that two day barrier when you start to avoid high power apps like 3D games or even things like GPS navigation and keep things simple. Charging though is one area where there is absolutely no contest here. The super fast 120 watt wired charging of the Xiaomi 13 Pro can take this device from zero to 100% in just 19 minutes. Yes, you heard me correctly, 19 minutes. Now, when you pair that with 50 watt super fast wireless charging, and there's also 10 watt wired reverse wireless charging thrown in, you're not going to have to wait around long for your phone to get back to operational battery levels. The Pixel 7 Pro does have that 30 watt wired and wireless charging, but they're actually capped at lower speeds at 21 and 23 watts respectively, which is a little bit disappointing when you consider smartphones are now hitting 45 watts on average. Looking at the camera systems, it's yet another case of raw hardware versus software tuning when we start to focus on the cameras of the Pixel 7 Pro and the Xiaomi 13 Pro. Sure, the raw camera specifications heavily favor the Xiaomi 13 Pro with that mammoth and truly interesting one inch main sensor. And it is interesting because it's a massive leap for mobile photography in many ways. It does make this just a great point and shoot option with that main lens that actually mimics the impressive Xiaomi 12S Ultra, which was available in a very limited capacity from late 2022. I would say though that the leap it might not be as pronounced as you might have expected, as the 50 megapixel Pixel 7 Pro main sensor does produce tack sharp contrast images which stand up against these. That said, Leica's lens tuning and color tuning means that the Xiaomi 13 Pro is a truly impressive product with all of the added depth that a larger sensor can achieve that Google just cannot compete with in terms of software tuning. All three lenses on the bigger device also include 50 megapixel capabilities, something that the Pixel just cannot replicate. Because the Xiaomi 13 Pro though is so heavily reliant on that massive one inch main sensor, it does sometimes feel like the other lenses take a slight step down. This is most notable with the three times telephoto zoom lens, which in tandem with digital cropping can go as far as 70 times. While it's usable up to about 10x, Beyond that, it really does start to fall apart quite quickly. It is good in isolation, but it does fall behind the Pixel 7 Pro and that dedicated five times periscope zoom, which has usable images even up to 20 times zoom levels. I would say it's hard to determine which is the better overall camera system for simple point and shoot photography, but Xiaomi does have an edge by virtue of that massive main sensor. It's actually in the main camera modes as well that the Xiaomi 13 Pro absolutely obliterates the Pixel right out of the box there are a mountain of functions that you can play around with including things such as Leica filters tilt shift and a dedicated pro mode for whatever reason google has never offered such a mode and the default google camera application lacks the ability for you to take full sensor 50 megapixel photos when we summarize we have to say that the pixel 7 pro is undoubtedly the best google phone today and it has to be said that the same could be mentioned of xiaomi's latest handset it isn't quite the best smartphone camera available even with the headline one inch sensor as we do think that the s23 ultra has the best across the board capabilities but it's certainly a big bold brash piece of technology that stands shoulder to shoulder with the best in the business what we continually find though when comparing the pixel 7 pro to the most expensive devices is that Google has really struck a fine balance this time around. Press performance on paper seems fairly mediocre, but the fine tuning helps elevate the experience above many so-called superior competitors. 
On paper, the Xiaomi 13 Pro surpasses the Pixel 7 Pro in almost all areas. In the real world, the differences are less pronounced. Credit where it's due, Xiaomi definitely has upped its game this time around, and we're hoping to see the company keep refining and owning its own devices year over year. The right phone for you, though, still depends heavily upon where you live. And the same can be said of the Pixel series wholesale, with both devices having limited markets in certain parts of the world. That said, though, at almost $450 less, the Pixel 7 Pro does make a case for you to consider it. For a spec-heavy tech fan, it is easy, though, to see why the global Xiaomi 13 Pro might be a head-turner or even a rival to the excellent Galaxy S23 Ultra. I want to ask you, though, which do you think is the better buy? Let me know down in the comment sections below why. But as always, until next time, this is Damien with 9to5Google saying thanks for watching, and I will speak to you later.